Hello and welcome to the Matt Lagore Show. I'm your host, Matt Lagore. Have you ever woke up in the morning and thought to yourself that today is the day I'm going to change the world? But you said to yourself, I really don't know where to start. I don't know if I should go to Washington or if I should go to Moscow. And then you just say, I give up. Well, the best way to do it, if you want to really change the world, is start by making your bed and cleaning up your room. Because you will have accomplished one task and it will make you feel accomplished. Which will lead you to your next task. And if for some reason you have a terrible day and you feel like you've got nothing accomplished, when you come home, you will come in to a made bed in a clean room and it will make you feel good and it will make you realize that you definitely accomplished something. And you know, it really does feel good when you walk in and see your room clean and your bed made. And I'm talking about when you do a good job. You tuck in the corners, you put the pillows nice. That makes you feel good. Maybe even snap a picture of it and put it on Instagram. Why not? Everybody else puts stuff on Instagram. Now, it might sound silly that a small task can really amount to much. But last winter, I went up to North Conway, and I went to a place called the Ice Castles. And I heard, you know, you've got to go see the Ice Castles. They're beautiful. And I thought to myself, wow, Ice Castle. It must be, they must cut these giant pieces of ice out of like a mountainside, and they, they probably lay them on top of each other. And I just had all these grand visions of how you would make an ice castle. And when I got there, I watched them building the ice castle, and I couldn't believe it. All they did is they started with a little icicle. Like, they'd, they'd take an icicle, they'd drip it, it would be like maybe like this long, and they would stick it in the snow, and then they would spray a mist of water on it, and the water would collect on the icicles till eventually it was big, and they would just keep doing it. And I thought to myself, wow, it, it's so simple, and it's really so quick. And I thought, wow, I could do that. Because a little thing adds up to a big thing like an ice castle or changing the world. So, Shannon? Yes. What do you think about that? I agree with you. You agree with yeah. me? Yeah. Sweep in front of your own door. Right. Yes. Exactly. Sweep Absolutely. in front of your own door. Yes. You've got to change yourself before you can change the world, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You can't control the world. So this is Shannon McCarthy, my guest. Yes. Shannon, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do? <sighs> well, I do a lot of different things, but um, currently my project uh, for the past four years with my co-author, who you've interview Tom A. Sacker. Um, we've written a screenplay and two books and we're working on some other projects that are kind of uh, involved with that those concepts so mm -hmm. and as, as well as uh, I'm running an Airbnb I have a couple houses I just bought a third house and so I've been doing that for about four years. Okay so how did you get into uh, Were you a real did you own real estate did you rent property is that what you did well, in, the, in the past? Yeah I, I was a real estate broker for years um, I own uh, rental properties, uh, I flipped houses, that sort of thing. Uh, this particular venture started because I had a house on top of a mountain. Mm -hmm. I bought it back, I don't know, 18 years ago. And then another house at the end of the road came available, and it was one of those offers you couldn't refuse. Mm -hmm. So we got that property and then started renovating it and, you know, on and off for years. And then at some point, my husband said, well, what are we going to do with two houses? One was rented full time and the other one was just in the middle of renovation. So I said, why don't we finish the last house and we'll start renting it like a weekend getaway? And he's like, yeah, OK. So I said, no, just let me try it. I said, I think it'll work. So I started on Craigslist and, you know, I, I rented it out a few times. And then I ran across Airbnb and I said, oh, this is kind of cool. Put it on Airbnb and it took off. So I said, all right, well, that was successful. So then I took the other house, and the people moved out, and I renovated that one, started that one up, and that one, I mean, so basically I'm at about 100% occupancy. So. so just for anybody who doesn't yeah. know what Airbnb yes. is, what is it? It's a, it's a website that you basically can create a profile. So if you have a home, um, a, a room in your house, you could basically rent it out like a B, like an Air, like a, a B and B, like, like a, a bed and breakfast. Bed and breakfast, right. yes. Um, so these houses, so when someone rents my house, they get the entire house. Other mm -hmm. people, so you have to clarify. So when you're renting, you need to know are the owners there or are you are you do you have the house to yourself? So yeah. they have full range of the entire house. Uh -huh. So it's it's a pretty cool concept. I mean, it's I mean I don't know how long it's been in business, but it has exploded around the world. Well, it certainly transformed the um, hotel business. Yes. Uh, it, it's, it's created like an opportunity for people like yourself to be 
uh, very successful with it. Now, I, I understand that you're very successful with it. All right, and do you, is there a rating that goes with yes. it? Yes. Yeah. What and what what is that? Well, they they rate you. There's like you know on on location and accuracy of listing and so on, and cleanliness and yeah. so forth. I have hundreds of of uh, ratings now, all five star. I'm a super host, which super means host. I'm a super yeah. host. Yeah. So it means so if you go on Airbnb and you want to find the best host, so in other words, you can you can filter out all the other ones. You can find the ones that are that people like the most. Um, you can search, you can go in the search engine and, and do that. So yes, and, and it's it's a lot of work because you have to make sure you're you're you know giving people what they want. Oh so. wait a minute. I want to start my introduction again. Yeah. Back to camera one, please. Phil. Uh, no, that's camera two. All right, there we go. All right. So today I want to introduce my guest, super host, Shannon McCarthy from Airbnb. Shannon, welcome to the show. <laughs> I didn't know you were a super host. I would have done it that way. That's okay. That's all right. I'll forgive you. I don't like to brag anyway. <laughs> Shannon McCarthy, you yes. could not have a more Irish name. No, Mora is my middle name. Too. Mora. Wow. Yeah. All yeah. right. You were just Irish through and through. I right? am. Irish American, though. I am. And was your father a police officer? When he just... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but he did like to drink. <laughs> so with the Airbnb. Yes. Um, how long, you said you've been doing it for how long? About four years. Four years. Yeah. And how many properties are you are you uh, using on Airbnb? Uh, I have two now, and we just purchased the third right. one. And so this has, you've been able to have 100% occupancy when you want it, right? Yes, yes. And has it, like, has it made it a lot easier for you as far as, because Craigslist, you know, Craigslist mm. was like, that was the only place you could go. Yeah. But it brings in like, in, I'm not saying it brings in a certain kind of, a certain kind of person goes on Craigslist. They're looking for a bargain. Yes. Right? Yes. And uh, you, so you, you'd have to do a lot of credit checks and background checks. Yes. Well, and, and so the beauty is, is, so Airbnb is a full service. So when you, as a, as a guest, you, you sign up. You have to give all kinds of information about yourself, your IDs, and so forth. So it, it's not that they vet you, but they have information about you. They mm -hmm. have your credit card and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it kind of eliminates that for mm -hmm. me um, and for other hosts. And and then all the transactions are done through there. Yeah. So I don't. That was the problem with with Craigslist. I'm thinking, how am I going to do this? I'm going to send them up. So I was sending PayPal. Um, invoices and yeah. it was just it was it was tough so Airbnb has calendars it keeps track of everything it blocks things off so you never have to worry about overbooking so it's kind of a real full service yeah you know and I, I, I really like it so it also if you're a bad guest you you, you would get a, a bad check uh, or a bad X goes on your name right so yeah. like if someone wants to book your your house, yeah. you know what kind of person you're getting, right? Is that true? I don't know. I'm asking. You well, know. they so they do all the transactions, and yeah. until their transaction is complete, yeah. they can't block off that time. So yeah. it's not as though they're going to stay there, and then Airbnb is going to say, oh, by the way, their credit card was refused. All of that is done prior. Well, I'm saying, what if you had a guest that comes in, and they're just not a good guest. They're dirty. They break stuff. They don't, you know... Is there a way to say like, hey, I wouldn't recommend? Yes, yeah, because I can rate them too. Right. Okay. So yeah, so, so that's, it goes both ways. It does go both ways, and that's why. So it's kind of one of those things where the guest says, you know, I want to continue using Airbnb. If I get a bad rating, then no one's going to rent to me. So there, it's in their interest too to be a good mm -hmm. guest. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, in 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 all the time I've been there, because people have said you're letting strangers unattended in your house. Yeah. I said, I'm going to tell you something. In all of that time, I've had a couple broken plates, very minor things, and they leave money. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, they leave me, you know, $20 for, a t you know, a $2 cup. And I'm thinking, you didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. But it's, that's, that's the kind of clientele I'm attracting anyway. But it, it, you have to make sure that you you tailor it to the audience that you're trying to attract too. So, I yeah. mean, and people always email it, oh my God, the pictures, they're amazing. I, I can't wait to stay there. And so it's, it's and I, and I and, you know, it's not that I discourage children, but it's really not conducive for, it, there's really nothing for kids to do. Yeah. I kind of tailor it for a romantic getaway. I want to yeah. try to keep the, you know, keep it calm and quiet. So mm -hmm. I, I usually get couples up there just for romantic getaways. Nice, so, nice. yeah. So has this Airbnb led to other things in your life? Uh, well, I mean, in what sense? Like you were talking about serendipitous type of uh, uh, actions that happen in your life. Would you say that, uh, is, it a, is it the Airbnb? Or is it the mindset? Is it the it's, new plane you put yourself on? What would you say? It, it's the mindset. So, yeah. yeah so basically, 
the way I approached this whole business in the first place was kind of a happenstance thing. It was, I looked at this and I said, oh, here's, I see an opportunity here. And I kind of just said, eh, you know, I just ran with it. And I've done that throughout my life. If, if something catches my attention and I say, wow, I think I want to do that, I do it. Mm -hmm. And I never thought that was unusual until, you know, Tom and I started writing the screenplay and the, and the philosophical book and we started to realize that and he's ironically the, the same personality he's just whatever's grabbed him he's done yeah and I realized that so many people kind of follow this path in life and they don't you know oh I'd really like to do that but I can't because I'm an attorney or I'd like yeah. to do, you know what I mean and so that that whole philosophy tied right into what we were doing and we said well we're a perfect example of people that basically said this is what I want to do, just do it. Mm -hmm. Don't let the idea of, I know I have to stay on this path, keep you on a path. If yeah. you want to do something, do it. So that, so in that sense, yeah, so that whole, that's a perfect example because prior to that, I was a chef. I've owned four restaurants and prior to that, I was a painting contractor, a cosmetologist, a real estate broker. So there's, there's no common denominator with anything I've ever done. Mm -hmm. It was something I, I saw, it was something shiny and I, I went with it. The restaurant business is tough. Oh, yes. It yeah. is. It is. It's extremely tough. Extremely tough. Not a lot of margin, right? Nope. Uh, no. Uh, you don't miss that, do you? No, I don't. And in fact, I mean, I, I love the, cr the creative end of it. Unfortunately, as a business owner, you understand that it, if you... So I, I would love to spend my time creating recipes. I had a gluten-free bakery, so I was kind of creating things that no one else was doing. But I was also you know, updating my website and doing my books and all the other aspects of business. And it, it burnt me out. And I said, well, I don't have time to focus on what I want to do. And so I got stuck in that, that whole, you know, business end of it. I want to ask you a question. Mm. All right. So you've told about these businesses. Now, these businesses were all successful, right? I mean, re made money, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, because really in, in the end, isn't most people like, well, I'm making money. Right. How do you get the courage up? All right. To walk away from something like, well, you know, I'm making money with it. Let me make it work. I'm going to stick it out because I think a lot of people get stuck in that. Like, well, I have a business. It's yeah. worth something like my business is worth something. Yes. So I don't want to walk away from it because I've put time into it. Right. I'm invested in it or maybe I want to sell it, but I don't know how. And maybe I need to make it. How do you get the courage to walk away from a uh, from a, a business you're in? Well, I mean, that's a good question. And, and uh, I mean, for me, it, it was never about money. So when I would, what I, what I learned, my lesson that I learned with my restaurants, for instance, is that I was, I would get that, I'd wake up in the morning and my mind was running and I'm like, what, I'm, how I'm going to create this restaurant? And I would create these restaurants and then I would start them. I would, you know, the day-to-day -day operations and I'd say, I hate this. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. I'd, and I'd sell it. Then a little while later, I'd get another idea for a restaurant, open that. And then the same, so it happened, so it took me four restaurants for me to go, oh, wait a minute, I see what's going on here. It's not the business that I want, it's the creation that's mm -hmm. turning my mind on. And the, the, the bottom line is, is I don't care, I don't care if it was making billions of dollars, if that's not what makes me happy. I mean, I, 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 I mean, my whole, every, every piece of furniture in my Airbnbs, I find on the side of the road or buy a Goodwill. So it's that I'm thrifty. I'm not, I'm, it's not about the money. So I said, I don't care if it's making money. It's not exciting me. Yeah. I don't wake up going, oh, I can't wait to go to work. So that is what compelled me to say, you know what? I don't care. I, I'm not, and that's the thing. I'm not tethered to all kinds of houses and boats and all this stuff that I have to keep that money coming in. I say, you know what? I, I'm ready to move on. And I move on. But the problem is when you have obligations, you have family and you have mortgages and you have all of this stuff, you know, people say when you have money, you're free. Well, I think it's the other way because when you have a lot of money, you go, okay, where do I spend it? Mm -hmm. I invested in all these things and now I'm tethered to those things. Yeah. So that I think is really the key is not to overextend yourself in your, 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 your consumer investments yeah. and then you get stuck and you have to produce that money. So that's the difference. So I had a couple of revelations in my life. Yes. All right? um, one was um, I, I have a business that I've done for a long time. And one day I had a very like uh, monetarily successful day, a big money day. Mm. And I was feeling like, wow, that was great. I, I, I made a lot of money today. 
And then I was home and I was like, I made a lot of money today. And then I thought about it and I was like, am I any further ahead now at seven o'clock tonight than I was at seven o'clock this morning yeah. with that money? Mm -hmm. Like, has my life moved forward? Have I transformed? Has anything happened other than I had a large sum, a relatively large sum of money come in that day? And the answer was no. Mm. And I felt very like disappointed. Really? <laughs> yes. That you weren't excited? Yeah, because it's not about the money. I yeah. realize it's not about the money. You do have to have money. Yep. Like that's part of the equation. Yes. Um, you know, recently, uh, over the last couple of years, I was like, I'm going to buy a bigger house. I want a bigger house. I want this. I want that. And then uh, about six months ago, I was looking around my house and I realized there was rooms in my house I don't even go in. Mm. I don't have a big house. But there's rooms we don't yeah. even go in unless somebody comes over. The room gets used. And I was like, why am I going to buy a bigger house when I don't use that room and we don't use that room? Right. And I said, that makes no sense. Right. It's like it's all a dream, right? The American dream. It is. It's a dream. Yeah. It's not really reality. Yeah, exactly. So now you obviously had that revelation that at some point that, you know, money is important, but yep. you need to have creativity is what drives you. Exactly. Right? Right? Exactly. And so... When you did that, is that when you started writing? I mean, I've, I've had that, that idea, um, and, it, and it, the opportunity arose to be able to convey those concepts when we started to write. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we started out writing a screenplay. You know, Tom had, 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 he was, at the time, I was on the board of a private academy, and I, they were having branding issues, so I asked Tom to help out with that. And then he said to me, uh, you know, something about, I, I have an idea for a screenplay. I have an interesting premise. And he told me, and I said, wow, that's brilliant. I said, why don't you write it? He says, because I can't. I said, what do you mean? Aren't you an author? He says, I can't see images in my head. I said, well, I can. He says, you want to write it? I said, okay. So we started writing this, this screenplay. And we had no intentions of making it philosophical. And not that the movie or the novel is philosophical per se. It has philosophies woven through it but when we were writing the screenplay all of these philosophies of life started to emerge out of the writing it was just the most bizarre thing but it all pertained to this this whole concept of following your heart and your passion this serendipitous approach and so after we finished the screenplay a couple of the philosophies were so I thought powerful he says, well, I'm going to write a nonfiction book about them. So he wrote the nonfiction book. And then while that What's was... What's the name of it? I Am Keats. Okay. So you. we have two books. One's mm -hmm. a nonfiction book and one's a novel. And they're both by the same name. Mm -hmm. so, I Am Keats? Yes, I Am Keats. So, I spell Keats. K-E-A-T-S. All right. So it's John Keats, the poet. So yeah. anyway, I mean, it's, it's a long story. And I'm not going to get into all of it because it's too, too complex. But so... So basically, that, that was our opportunity, and, and then we uh, ended up turning the screenplay into a novel, and so, the, you know, it's just been a, a very interesting, fun adventure. So you found things that, as you wanted to do things, the opportunity arose in front of you to be able to take the next step. I, I seized the opportunity. So right. in other words, a lot of times opportunities come and people go, oh, I'd love to, but I can't because yeah. I have to make money or I have to do X, Y, or Z. So mm -hmm. they pass up this something that really appeals to them because it's not, you know, it's not going to produce. It's not, it doesn't seem viable. So they say, well, yeah, it, that would be fun. And that's the whole, that's what we're trying to, in these philosophies is to tell people, look, you, you have one chance in life. You, this is it. You go, you got one shot. Are you going to stay stuck in a cubicle, you yeah. know, metaphorically speaking, for mm -hmm. the rest of your life and stay on that wheel, produce money, buy more and more stuff so that you're tethered to it? Or are you going to stop and live and say, you know what? Yeah, I need to make my mortgage. I need to put food on the table. But I also want to experience life and I want to create and I want to enjoy and, and, and go where my heart's pulling me. So, so what's your next goal? Like what's your what, what would you say if you had to say what your purpose was? I mean, I think we kind of mm. understand your purpose, but what what what's some of your next goals that you'd be willing to share with us? Well, uh, I don't know if if there's goals per se. Mm -hmm. In fact, we that that was a conversation Tom and I had yesterday about goals is because a goal is something out in the future of something that you're working toward. Mm -hmm. So in other words, and that's the problem. A lot of people go, well, once I get that, I'm going to be happier. Once I get that 
then I'll, and so in the meantime, they're on this journey to get somewhere and they're, they're not enjoying the journey. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're saying, no, no, don't worry about something in the future. Live for today. And wherever that ends up is basically your goal, so to speak. It's nothing that you're setting and you're aiming for. You're kind of living and you're enjoying what you're doing. You know, and that, yeah, I do. That's really yeah. beautiful because, like, you really only have right now, right? Yeah. You know, and you can you can lay out plans for tomorrow, but we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't. Nobody knows. And like, that's a that's one of the th issues I think people get into in this day and nowadays. It's like, what's going to happen? You yes. know, I think this is going to happen, which is really crazy to say. I think this is going to happen because you have no idea. Of course not. You don't even know if you're going to be here tomorrow. No, exactly. Right? No, but here we, today, gone tomorrow. Right? right. We have the illusion of control that we think yeah. that we can predict the future. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the, the thing is, and a lot of times you hear that term, there is no there there. So people get to their goal and then they think, I mean, like your, your point of making a lot of money and you're thinking, oh, if I could only make that money and then you do and you go, well, what does that mean? What, I, I, don't, I don't feel any different. I, I should feel excited. I should mm -hmm. say, wow, I hit a goal. Yeah. And you didn't it, because it's your anticipation of what you were going to experience emotionally didn't happen. You know, one of my earliest experiences with a disappointing goal was when I was 10 years old and my parents used to get this catalog and it was called the unity catalog. And they would let us like maybe every couple of months pick something they want. We wanted. Oh, I want that. Yeah. And they, we would order it. We'd, we'd, I, I would think you got on the phone and you'd order it and you put the things in. And 10 days later, you would get your item. And I wanted an electric football game. You, do you remember those? Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You turn it on. So. For 10 days, I lived in this anticipation of this electric football game. I couldn't wait. I right. couldn't wait. The day it came, I, I got it. I opened the box. I put it out. I set up the guys, and I turned it on, and I was like, what a pile of garbage, all right? It's stupid. It was not what I thought, and I, was, I never played with that thing. Isn't that funny? And I was, I was really like... Disappoint. Every time I would look at it, it would remind me of that right. disappointment, of uh, that disappointing goal, that thing I'd lived for yep. for ten days. And when you're ten years old, that's a whole lot of time. Yeah, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So that was one of my first experiences with yeah, a goal well, that was really disappointing. Yeah. No. And let's face it, expectation leads to disappointment. Right? I mean, the whole best part yeah. of that electric football game with the 10 days in between, <laughs> before I got yeah, it. Yeah. No. That excitement. Right. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. You know, and, and sometimes I think that that, that the whole time before the goal is the best time. Abs About five years ago, I did a Tough mutter, And so from February to May, I trained every single day. Yes. I'd lift weights and I'd run every other day. Lift weights one day, run the next day. Wow. And I did that for, to, from, from February to May. Yep. And I did the, the, the Tough mutter. It was a very great accomplishment, but I realized people were telling me, well, what was the experience like? I go, the experience was what I expected. It was hard. I said, but really what was the best part was that February to May, that training I did, it like totally changed me as a person yeah. through that time. And that was the experience. It really wasn't doing so the challenge. So the process was the goal. The process was, yeah. So, yeah. you know, I realized that being in the moment of the process is so much more fulfilling than actually getting it. Because then yes. it's done. It's yeah. over. Yeah. They, Be, right. Because if you're in the moment and you're not enjoying it, then you don't belong there. They say a lot of actors have that feeling. Like Daniel Day-Lewis, one of the reasons he retired as an actor is he said the disappointment when it was over was mm. just too much for him. Yeah. Yeah. So I want, this has been great. So yeah. super host Shannon McCarthy, what else, do you have anything else to add before we, because we've only got a couple minutes left. Do we have anything else to add? Well, are, are you talking about in regard to Airbnb specifically or just mm, in general? Just in general, well, yeah. Well, I mean, I would say just in general that, that you follow your heart. You don't, yeah. you don't follow the crowd. You don't follow what the, the script of the world or what you're yeah. supposed to do. If it's, I, I talked about that last week that yeah. I said 95% of the world is really living their life wrong. They are. All right. And that's why you see so much disappointment out there. That's why you see so many people upset. They're not getting what they want. I always say to myself when I watch the news, I see these disappointed people. I say, I wonder if they made their bed today. Yeah. You know, yep. because are they really following their dreams? So do you agree with that? Like, I agree with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. If more people would live like that, then we wouldn't have the problems we do because they'd be focused on their heart and mm -hmm. their desire. So they mm -hmm. wouldn't be focused on drama of the world. Mm -hmm. So let's just go back to Airbnb for yes. a second. If somebody wanted to do Airbnb yes. and they own property, yeah. like you can do Airbnb anywhere, right? Yeah. Like yep. I can do it here in North Reading if Absolutely. I want. Absolutely. Right? So what, what, what is the process of it? Like, what do you do? 
Well, I mean, it, it depends on the property that you have. As I said, I have houses, but if you have rooms in your house, if, and, and, and you know, if that's your personality and you like to entertain and you like to have strangers in your house, you know, I'll, more power to you. So basically what you want to do is, you, you, I mean, Airbnb will actually send a photographer, a professional photographer, to take pictures of your property, mm -hmm. and you list it. And uh, basically, you know, if it's something desirable, then people will start staying, and then your, your reviews are what are going to drive your traffic after mm -hmm. that. So if you start getting bad reviews, then, then you're not going to get follow-up. Do you recommend buying property for Airbnb? Well, that's a tough one. I mean, it was, it, I, had a, I was in a unique situation with these houses. Um, and again, you know, so my background being real estate and I was, you know, in contracting too. So we do all of our own work. So to, to go out and buy a piece of property and if you're, if you're you know, if you have a mortgage and it, I mean, it, it's, there's so many variables. It was, I was in a unique situation, um, which is, you know, once these took off, then I said, okay, I can justify buying another one. So it, it's all relative to the people, but I mean, it, there's a good return. So, yeah. you, I mean, you work the numbers. If the numbers work and you can, if, if you can have a down period. So if you say, uh, you know, I'm going to maybe, you know, be realistic and say I'm, I may have a 10% occupancy rate. Can I afford it? Then, then you ride it out. But So are you saying that a 10% occupancy rate is, is good or is well, bad? Well, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I guess it's, it depends on what your expectations are or what your... If you have a need for X number of dollars, so if you're buying something, making an investment, renovating, then you say, okay, you know, from from you know from a cost standpoint, um, you know, you have to figure out what works for you. I'm I'm not saying that that's what you shoot for, but if you if you can write it out, because you know people have asked me, and I said, look, you have to understand, I didn't start out at 100% occupancy, so you have a lot of downtime, and you have to see if the numbers work. If they do, then go for it. A weekly rental, yes. if you were renting by the week, yes. and you did it for three weeks, that's, that's larger than a monthly rental if someone was to live there, right? Yeah, yes, exactly. Well, I mean, typically, I mean, mine are about a buck fifty a night, yeah. and the weekends are 200 and yeah. it's And that's low because that's how I started out, and I haven't raised the pricing. Um, but if you compare it to hotels, I mean, what you're getting dollar for dollar is far more than a hotel. But I'm comfortable with that amount, um, and I, I I wanted it rented. You know, I could have pushed for more, mm -hmm. but you know, you it, it, it's is does it really amount to more? Um, so, as far as so, if you do the math, you know, say uh, say you average 175 a night for 30 nights. Of course, it's going to be more than it would be if you rented it full time. Right. You yeah. Know? yeah. But you have cleaning costs and other costs and so forth. So. Do you have a cleaning crew that comes in right after? Yes. I actually I did it for three years myself. Yeah. And then I and I said, all right, I need to let go and stop being such a control freak and hire somebody else because I was um, I was obsessive, and I said, well, they're not gonna they're not gonna everything's not gonna be straight. And I said, but if you don't see it, it's not gonna bother you. So Who I does all the my, linens and the towels? My, my cleaning woman. So she, we worked something out where she said, because I said, I'm going to get a laundry service so I don't have to lug all the stuff home. She said, I'll do it. I said, okay, good. She does it, irons the pillowcases. And I mean, so she's been a godsend. But I was concerned, what if this woman doesn't show? Mm -hmm. So we, you know, I, I tried her out and she became, I mean, she's, in, she's invaluable. I mean, she's dependable. She goes above and beyond, goes to the store, picks up. I, I leave bacon, eggs, and cream for the, for the you know, uh, guests. So she does all of that stuff. So she, I'm very fortunate. How often do you go up to your house? Not very often anymore because mm -hmm. she's the one who goes up there all the time. You know, so if, if there's an issue, uh, you know, a, a roof leak or something, and they call me, I'll go up. But other yeah. than that, I, I barely even go up there anymore, which mm -hmm. is really amazing because I was up there pretty much every day. So. Yeah. But it, it's not something right off the bat. You kind of have to give it some time, and you have to get comfortable with it and, and feel comfortable with other people running things. Does your husband like that you're an entrepreneur? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He doesn't get that. He's, he's the kind of person that's just like, you, you just, he lets just let you run. Yeah. Well, he's yeah. an entrepreneur. So, yeah. I mean, that's, ever since we've been together, that's all we've ever done was businesses. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of always been a challenge. We've done it and then moved on to something else. So, 
yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, when it's in your blood, it's in your blood. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, Shannon McCarthy, yes. super host Shannon McCarthy, yes. thank you for being on my show All today. Right. Thank you. All right. And is there, a, is there a way, like, if anybody wants to check out your book, they could see it? Absolutely. Yeah, go to IamKeats.com. IamKeats, so K-E-A-T-S, right? Correct. IamKeats.com. Yes. All right, Shannon, Excellent. thank you. Thank you, Matt. All right, thank you for watching the Matt Lagore Show. If you want to check any of my other shows out, you can go to YouTube and go to the Matt Lagore Show. You can also go to Facebook, the Matt Lagore Show. I have some uh, interesting videos that aren't just mine up there. I try to put up some nice, helpful information. All right, thanks for watching the Matt Lagore Show. See ya!